Hey everyone, it's Ali Lindley here from One Number, and today we're going to take a look at data source level LODs. If you haven't seen our fixed LODs video, why not check that out? It's linked in the description below, um, and that might tee you up well to understand this as well as possible. This workbook is in the description below if you're keen to follow along. So a data source level LOD is similar to a fixed LOD, uh, but the difference is that instead of fixing at a certain dimension level, you're fixing at the level of the whole data source, right? So instead of saying, hey, uh, for each year, show me my sum of sales, like you would in a fixed LOD, fix at the year level, show me sum of sales. We just say at the whole data source level, show me my sum of sales. That's what we're going to try and do. We've got four pretty cool examples that I hope are going to be helpful. Uh, there are loads of others. Feel free to post your favorites down in the comments below if you use this. So here's one that we use all the time, right? What did we sell on our latest business day? This is so useful if you're running a business that doesn't run every single day or your data source doesn't update every single day. So for instance, you only sell Monday through Friday and now you wanna view your data on a Monday morning, right? You open your, your uh, Tableau workbook and you wanna see what's going on on a Monday morning. Well, if you just use the today function to filter, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna have a blank worksheet to look at here because Tableau's gonna say, hey, there's no data in here. So what we've gotta do is say, well, find me the latest order date in the whole data source and then pull that in here. So it's not particularly difficult, but uh, let me show you exactly where we've got this. Oh, my right click's not working. Okay, so something like this. The key is these curly braces, okay? The key is the curly braces. Now, what these do is they fix it against the data source. So anytime you wrap anything in curly braces, it, fix it fixes it against the data source. Meaning this has turned our equation from saying, hey, if our max order date equals our, well, does our max order date equal our order date, which is going to throw up all kinds of Tableau errors, right? Because you can't aggregate one side of an equation and not the other. The curly braces allow us to say, does the order date, in my view, match the maximum order date in the entire data source? Meaning this brings it up to date. Uh, either for your latest update or your latest, you know, whatever it is. It's so, so helpful. We use this all the time. The second one that might be interesting to you is trying to include some totals in the title of a worksheet. You know, often people create a second worksheet for these totals. Uh, and sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not necessary. But as long as you know this is an option, you know, the freedom to create a second worksheet if you want to or not. So in this particular case, we want to see, hey, how many total customers do we have? So what you might be thinking is, why can't we do something like, hey, just give me the count distinct of customer ID. Um, let's do this. And that should give us everything, right? It should sum it. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to double click on my title. I'm going to insert this field. And let's hit OK, but I only get a count of one. OK, so what the Tableau is not happy because it doesn't really understand what I'm trying to do. What we really need to say is something like this. Take the exact field that we had, count a sync to customer ID, wrap it in the curly braces, which means that we're fixing it at the data source. So we're saying for the whole data source, uh, give me the count a sync to customer ID. Now, something that's super important is you might notice we've actually filtered this to state equals California. And if you're particularly perceptive, you will have noticed that there are 577 marks in the view, but a count of 793 total customers. So that's not adding up. And there's nothing sort of spicy going on with our calculation. All that's happening is in Tableau's order of operations, it carries out these fixed expressions first. So the fixed LOD is calculated over here. So Tableau is saying, cool, you got 793 customers. And then it's running the state filter after that. So if we want the customer count to be updated based off of our state filter, we're gonna need to take our state filter and bump it up to context, which is not super difficult to do. You can come through here, right click on your state filter and add it to context. And now that says 577 total customers which is super cool. We've got two really interesting examples coming up that you might enjoy, but I just want to say, if you want to 
you know, take a step forward in your Tableau knowledge, why not book an, an office hour with us? We have these one hour sessions available that you can book for any kind of Tableau problem solving, mentoring, teaching, you know, things like that. We'd love to come, uh, come alongside you and, and help you tackle those problems. And if you want some more structured learning, uh, why not take one of our classes? We've got a bunch of awesome Tableau classes coming up. We'd love to see you there. Here's one that, that's pretty cool. So there's this custom title label that we have. Uh, so based off of your state selection, right? So we're still filtering on state. And what normally happens is it says uh, for, um, you know, for none states or for all states. And then if you've got multiple states, it can be a little bit tricky to input here. Uh, let me show you exactly what would happen just for interest's sake. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's put this on detail. I mean, on the tooltip and insert it here. I think it's nice to have this as some kind of contrast. So the minute we have multiple states selected, we get the little asterisk, right? It's attributed. Okay, so what we need to do is create some kind of filter that allows us to basically say, hey, if my state selected equals the state in the view, tell me what that state is. Uh, otherwise, say that it's um, multiple states or all states. I think those are the three that we need. Wait, let's see exactly what's going on with our little state. Yeah, here we go. So yeah, those are three options. So don't get too confused by our little um, equation here. Basically what's going on at the top in this first line is we're saying, hey, if my state that I've selected equals the state in the view, tell me what that state is. Now the min and the max in front of those state fields are not particularly important. They basically just act as an aggregation, right? So that Tableau doesn't throw up our aggregation error saying, hey, you've aggregated some of your equation and not all of it. All this is saying is, hey, if the state equals the state, tell me what the state is. So don't get too confused by the mins and maxes. The else if over here basically says, cool, if we've got more than one state selected, right? If it's not just, hey, does state equal state? Then it's saying, if the total count distinct of states, that's in my view, equals the maximum count distinct of states at the data source. So what is this going to give, it, give us? Well, in, if it's just in the US, this is going to give us a count distinct of 50, right? The maximum count distinct of states in the US is going to be 50. So if the total count distinct of states in our view is 50, right? If these match, then obviously you've selected all the states. So we can just say all states. Else, if it doesn't meet either of these, if it's not one state, one, oops, one, and it's not 50, then it's multiple states. And that's all. And that allows us to create this pretty cool little title thing. So there's our multiple states. Let's select uh, none and then one, Alabama, Alabama. Very nice. Okay, cool. I love it. The last one that could be super interesting is this hard-coded percent of total. Anytime you need a hard code, like a total number, like your total uh, across the data source, hey, this fixed against the data source LED is probably the thing that you need. So you might know that when you use a percent of total as a window function, you know, as a, sorry, as a table calculation, uh, what ends up happening is that as you filter, that table calculation recalculates every time. Why? because the dimension filter is carried out. So we're filtering by subcategory. And then uh, our little table calc happens all the way down here. So it's calculating our 100% of total after the filter has been carried out. And we want it to be the other way around. So that can be super helpful to take our uh, fix against the data source and say, hey, take my sum of sales, you know, whatever it is for whatever subcategory, and divide it by the sum of sales at the data source. Now, it might be a quirk of this little fix at the data source thing, but if we just had uh, something like this, we're gonna get an aggregation error. So it kind of sees this fix at the data source element as not really aggregated. So we're just gonna wrap this in max. Doesn't really matter too much. And what that means is that we're saying, take the sum of sales for every bar, divide it by the sum of sales at the data source, you know, the total sum of sales. And now as we filter through those, 
those percentages don't change even though the bars do change. You can achieve the same thing using an exclude function, um, but this is a nice way to do it too. Okay, I hope this has been super helpful. Uh, there are so many wonderful use cases for this little, this little function. So I really do hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. You can find us on LinkedIn. We're also uh, so happy to answer any of your questions. We hope to see you soon.